we are getting ready to make cookies. Look at my beautiful cookie cutter. Hey guys, welcome back to Cooking at Pam's Place. I'm Pam and we're gonna start off with our shortbread cookie recipe. These cookie cutters were given to me by Custom Mall. Before we get started real quick, if you are new to the channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. Take a second and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on that notification bell so you won't miss anything. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I have my stand mixer here. If you do not have a stand mixer, you can do this by hand. It's just a little bit easier with the stand mixer. And I have my paddle attachment connected here. Now, the first thing we need to do is sift our flour. I'm just gonna use a basic strainer to sift the flour. I will have the exact recipe and ingredient measurements down in the description. And for the description, when you're looking at the video, look just below it, you'll see the words, show more, click that, it will expand the field. And you may have to click the word more one more time. It just expands the field and you'll see everything in the description. Okay, and this is all you need to do to sift the flour. So I'm gonna get this sifted and we'll be right back. So I'm about halfway through sifting, and now I'm going to add in my cornstarch. If you are using salt, you want to add the salt in at this point too, but I am using salted butter, so I'm omitting the actual salt in the recipe. And I'll just go ahead and finish sifting this so that that cornstarch can sift right along with the rest of the flour. Now that we have this sifted, we're going to sift it aside. And in our actual mixing bowl, we're going to add our butter, softened butter, and our sugars. I have regular white granulated sugar here. And I have confectionery's powdered sugar here. Okay, we're gonna use the paddle attachment and we're going to cream this until it's light and fluffy. Okay, so this is how it should look when it's nice and creamy. I did stop it once and scrape down my sides. So you want it to be nice and creamy, just like that. Now, while we're running, we're gonna add in our egg and our vanilla. Continue to cream it until it's nice and well blended and creamy. It's time to add our flour mixture a little bit at a time. I'm going to add it in, start it up, and then I'll continue to add it in until it's all gone. But you don't want to just dump it in there. Add it a little bit at a time. Make sure each part's getting incorporated. You want to uh, mix this until a soft dough forms, okay? Okay, so we pretty much have a soft dough now. As you can see here, take this off, got to get it off of the paddle here. And I can show you guys. Now we're going to make small discs, probably about four of them, and put them in the refrigerator for a couple of hours. You need the dough to be chilled, but not hard, because that is going to make it workable when it's time to roll it out. See how that looks? That's what you want, nice, soft dough. There is no rhyme or reason to this. You can actually uh, put it all in one solid piece and wrap it up in a disc like that. But I like to do mine in portions because that way, while I'm rolling one part out, the other part can stay in the refrigerator. probably about three parts here. Just make sure when you do this, you make sure it's into a flat disc. That's all you want. That way, when you get ready to roll it out, you're already pretty much starting with your basic circle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just like that. Wrap it up on the plastic wrap and lay it flat in the refrigerator. If you have to move something over or on another shelf, do so. 
So I'm gonna do the rest of them just like this, put them in the refrigerator. Once they get cold, we'll be back. So we're gonna start with just one of these and it's time to roll these cookies out. Yes. Okay, so just take them out of your plastic wrap. You wanna get some flour and put on whatever surface. I'm gonna work on my cutting board right here. If you have a um, baking mat, that'd be perfect because it's non-stick so you don't have to worry about all this extra flour but we just brush the flour off in the end if we need to take your dough and you want to roll it out about a fourth of an inch thick you don't want it too thin uh and you don't want it uh very thick either you need to be able to roll it out Okay, and if it starts to crack on you, that means like mine is doing, that means your dough is actually a little bit too cold. So you might have to let it sit for a few minutes and become room temperature. So I think that's what I'm gonna do and we'll be right back. Okay, so after you go ahead and roll it out to about a fourth inch thick, You're gonna, and depending on the size of your cookie cutter is going to depend on how many you actually get out of there. Okay, so the first thing you kinda wanna do is put a little flour around the edge and also dust the top of your dough with a little flour. It's gonna help release your cutter in the end. You take that and you press it right straight down, straight down. Give it a little jiggle, just a little bit to make sure it's gonna come out. Dust the top of your actual cutter as well, shaking off any excess, but make sure you have a little on there so that it can release. Then we're gonna go ahead and press down. Press down nice and firm as well as on the edge of the cookie cutter. Go ahead and release, and it's looking good. Wiggle this back and forth, gently, gently, gently. And there it is. Now I'm gonna do this one upside down so that you guys can see it a little bit better. Again, I'm gonna go around my edges with just a tad bit of flour. Press it down, right down. Wiggle it back and forth gently, just a little bit. Again, dusting the top, shake off any excess, and press down. Making sure you get a good imprint, then go around the sides again, and wiggle gently, just gently. You don't wanna crack it or anything, just gently, and then pull straight up. Okay and then we pull this end up. Now from here, we have a prepared baking sheet with some parchment paper. We are going to remove the edges from around here and put them on that. We will need to cool these, grab a spatula. We will need to cool these again for another 10 or 15 minutes to make sure they're cold going into the oven. Look at that. Doesn't that look wonderful? Says, come with me, I'll show you what to do. Cooking at Pam's place. And sometimes while you're doing this, you will find that you will have a little dough in between it. Do not wash it. Take something, a toothpick is what I probably should have, but take a toothpick or something and just go between the lines and scrape it out. If you wet it, it may not dry properly for your next batch. Okay, we are now ready to go back into the refrigerator while our oven heats up for about maybe 10 or 15 minutes. They need to be cold going into the oven and I'll explain that in a minute. Okay, while our cookies are in the refrigerator cooling, let's talk about the giveaway. But before we do that, I just want to make sure I mention I have my oven preheating on 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That may seem a little bit high for cookies, but you want them to set. You want them to set quickly, and that's what that high heat will do. They're chilling in the refrigerator. Please don't forget that step. It will help 
to keep them from spreading so they can keep their shape and you can still read them when they're done. So we're gonna let those chill, let our oven come up to temp, then we'll be ready to bake. Typically they will bake by eight to 10 minutes. It depends on your oven. So starting at about five or six minutes in, take a peek and see what they're doing. And if they're starting to look lightly golden brown, just very barely browning on the edges, it's probably time for you to take your cookies out. Let them cool completely. They will still be a little soft. Leave them on their baking sheet about 10 minutes and let them cool, then move them to a wire rack and let them cool completely before you dig in, okay? All right. As I mentioned before, Custom Mall sent me a few of these cookie cutters. So I'm gonna give one away. What I need for you all to do is in the comments of the video, not the comments of the premiere, but once it indexes into a video, I need you to leave me a comment. You can say whatever you wanna say, but make sure you put custom mall in the comment. I will be using a comment picker. You'll have one week. This is Sunday, so next Sunday, I will be in that video, I will announce the winner from this video. So you need to watch this video, you need to leave a comment, then you need to come back next Sunday to see who won the cookie cutter, okay? And then I will need that person to contact me and I'll have this information in the winning video announcement. I will need them to email me so that I can get their address to mail them their cookie cutter. You'll need to type in one word, custom mall. You can say anything else you want. Hey, Pam, how you doing? Custom mall <laughs> or whatever. I will also leave that name, custom mall, so everybody can make sure they spell it right because I will be using a random comment picker. So that's why it's important you get that spelling right and you leave it in your comment. And I will leave that in the pinned comments along with the link to vote for me for the 2023 Favorite Chef competition. So don't forget to vote. We are all done. Don't they look amazing? Oh my goodness. Oh, don't forget to leave me the comments so that you can win a cookie cutter. Come with me. I'll show you what to do from cooking at Pam's place. Wanted you guys to see a close up. That looks amazing. And I've already been tasting one because, well, I just could not wait. If you are new to the channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me today here in my kitchen. I really do appreciate each and every one of you guys. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me here too. And to my channel members, thank you so much for your wonderful, amazing support. Please remember to vote for me in the 2023 favorite chef competition. We are down to the quarterfinals and I'm so thankful for each and every one of you all who are voting each and every day for those who wanted to vote but couldn't and those who tried and weren't able to. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Let's take it on home y'all. Okay, let's see here. Mmm, buttery, mmm, slightly crispy. I need some milk and coffee <laughs> because I can't decide which one I want. Mm, delicious. And I will see you all next time. The good Lord willing and the creek don't rise. Bye-bye.